Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to talk about a new diffusion model. Well, it's not really new, but it was introduced in a previous video about OMOST. This is called the Dense Diffusion. These models are pretty cool because you can control a specific area, or what we call a specific image region, highlighted in the image canvas, and you can use a text prompt with a specific keyword. Right in the examples here, as you can see, the cute hamster is highlighted in orange and holding the blue item, the red rose, and the yellow item, which is a sunflower. The dense diffusion is very accurate in allocating each element to specific regions in the image canvas. Now, as we have talked about almost previously, the difference is that almost uses large language models to collaborate with dense diffusion and generate the coding of what they call the canvas. Lastly, it allows image generation with specific regions. Now we can test it out in ComfyUI. They have the ComfyUI Dense Diffusion custom nodes already here. So when you search this keyword, you will see the Dense Diffusion and also the Omos custom nodes appear in the ComfyUI manager. So load up this workflow. It already includes this workflow in the custom nodes project. Click into the subfolder examples and you will see this Dense Diffusion compare.json file which is the workflow file itself. Once you load this workflow, you will see three comparison rows for the generated result side-by-side -side comparison. The one below is a very traditional text-to-image using SDXL models, generated with a text and passed to a very simple case sampler without too many special settings. Let's drag this a little bit closer so we can see the whole picture of this. Now the text prompt is not a special prompt. In the one at the bottom here, we are just using a text prompt. So the text is going to be a watermelon, a girl, and a table. That is the three elements that we are going to use. Let's drag a preview image here so we can experiment more with that. Now, the orange groups highlighted here are the ones connected with Dense Diffusion. As you can see, we have three pairs of text prompts connected with Dense Diffusion conditions. So in the first one, we have seen everything in the image that we are going to generate in this text prompt, which is the girl, the watermelon, and the table. Now, the second dense diffusion is going to highlight it in a masked area, and this is going to be controlled as in this region, connecting the text prompt box below here, which is one girl long hair. This area is going to show the girl with long hair displayed in this region. So how do you control different regions here? By connecting the masks in dense diffusion conditions. We have the green dot right here connecting the masks. So drag that below here and we will see it clearly. The mask from RGB is connecting the red color. When we have an input mask image, for example, like this one that I just created as PNG files, I just painted a red color region here and a green color region on the right side to control specific regions on the image canvas for specific items, elements, or characters to display on our new generated image. So the red color regions here are for the dense diffusion conditions. That is going to display this text prompt, one girl, long hair, and then continue connecting the second pair of mass conditions, which is the watermelon. Right here, we have the text prompt. It's very simple, telling the AI what to do by showing the watermelon in this green mask area, which is going to be located in the mask from RGB. As you can see, we have loaded this load image already, so it's very customizable. You don't have to follow this exactly the same way. When you test this workflow, you can use a very simple image editor to paint some areas as you desire. Once it's done, you can load this mask image that you create in the image editor, bring it into the workflow, and you will have a display like this. So the girl on the right side is the watermelon. Let's change that to a preview image, so we don't have to save that much testing image locally. Lastly, we have the blue groups, the blue highlighted groups. This is a traditional comfy UI condition connection method. Right here, we have the connection set mask, which we have by default in comfy UI, the system itself, without installing any additional custom nodes. But one problem is that it does not always follow the exact regions that we highlighted in the mask image. Sometimes there will be a little offset by using the conditioning. And right in the case sampler, as you see, the difference is that it is connecting in the condition combined and bringing that to the positive connections in the case sampler. So that is how the display is. And again, let's change that to preview image. We can test more different image results from this one, and let's run it one more time and see the result again. 
As you can see, it is not always exactly the same specific regions, even when using condition masks. But by using the dense diffusion conditions right here, we achieve much more accuracy by using the conditions and mask areas. The difference is that we connect the model's data from the foundations when we generate an image, because much of the influence comes from the model's data itself. So in the case sampler, we are connecting the models and also the conditions positively. That way, we have more accurate data passing into the case sampler by using the dense diffusion method here. The outputs are always in the same locations of whatever regions you set on the mask image compared with the SDXL. Let's turn it up to four images per batch and see what the difference is with SDXL. Just a simple text to image. There we go, we have the SDXL text to image simple flow. The second loading will be the dense diffusion and the last loading will be the comfy UI conditioning with mask. Once we have four images per batch, we will see the difference of each method and their pattern of generated images. Now we have four images per batch in each group here. As you can see, the text to image SDXL method is not as accurate as we want it to be. Sometimes the characters are right in the middle, sometimes the watermelon is too big or too small, and we don't have accurate control over whatever we desire when designing the layout of the AI image. For example, I have the mask drawing RGB color image loaded here. I want the green color to be a watermelon and the red color to be the girl sitting beside it. That's how it looks in SDXL text to image without any control and conditions. It will be uncontrollable. And look at the top here. We have the blue, which is the conditioning mass control, and the orange one, which is the dense diffusion condition control. Now, both of them look very similar. Let's make the size a little bigger. We can compare side by side here. Both are very similar. Even the condition with mask method can almost locate two elements in the desired regions that we wanted. But as you can see, the dense diffusion is more accurate by locating the lady on the right side and the watermelon on the left. On this image, the left side will be more targeted and specific, allowing us to control whatever we want in the mask image itself. By looking at the conditioning combined method here, there are no four out of two images. By setting the mask conditions, it is not always in the same positions, or we call them the same regions for the two elements that we added in the image generation. As you can see in this one, the characters are right in the middle, so two out of two are not going to be correct in the positions. Even though we have set the mask area already, that is the problem. Without additional models to control your image generation, just like how we have control net to control the pose, the depth of an image, etc., we need some additional models for control. The dense diffusion is very good for specific control when you want something like generating a poster with a product on the right side and the models on the left side, something like that would be a great idea to use. Comparing with Omos now, Omos generates using large language models, fine-tuned large language models to generate a canvas code. This canvas code maps the mask area in the canvas of the upcoming AI-generated image and controls it by using this canvas code, allocating the regions for each element that is going to be rendered in our new image. I think dense diffusion by using it in ComfyUI is more directly handled and easier for designers to run without incorporating large language models and waiting for a few minutes to generate the source code of the canvas and bringing that to AI generation processing. So that is it for this video. I hope this inspires you and I will see you in the next videos. Have a nice day. See ya.